Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. This is Anthony Booker and welcome to the Gathering Place Ministries. Today we're going to be talking about is one saved always saved correct? Is one saved always saved correct? I'm going to be reading from John chapter 6 verse 27. Here begins the reading of God's holy word and it says, Labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for that meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you, for him hath God the Father sealed. So far the scripture. Sealed here means to stamp for security or preservation. When something is preserved, it's kept from being spoiled or from loss. Jesus said he was sealed, and this sealing is by the Holy Spirit. 2 Corinthians 1.22 says, Who hath also sealed us and given the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. And Ephesians 1.13 says, We were sealed with the Holy Spirit. Also in Ephesians 4.30, it says, We are sealed unto the day of redemption. That means we are preserved, kept from being ruined, kept from loss. We have a stamp on us that we are secured. We are eternally secured of our salvation when you have the Holy Spirit. But the foundation of God stands sure having this seal. God knows them that are his and let everyone that name the name of Christ depart from iniquity. First John 3 and 6 says, Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth, that is, lives a sinful lifestyle, hath not seen him, neither known him. So if you believe you are saved and always say, but you can live any way you want to, then you are deceived. We, the ecclesia, the called out ones, were foreknown by God in Christ before the foundation of the world. And based on that foreknowledge, we were predestined to be conformed into the image of Christ. Let me say it like this. The church was in Christ before the world began. Everybody was in God, but not everybody was in Christ. But didn't Jesus die for the world? Yes, but what world? The world without end, that is the church. God purchased or he purposed the mystery of his will to be in Christ. And that mystery was Christ being on the inside of us. God foreknew us. That means he knew us before we came here. That is the church. Those that were to be saved, he knew. So he predestinated those he knew already for salvation. Now, when Christ comes, he will say to some, I never knew you, meaning even though they were created by God, they were not created in the image of God's son through salvation. First John 2 and 19 says, they went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. Adam was made in the image of God. The image of God is the Spirit of God. Adam lost that image when he sinned. The Spirit of God. Adam still had the breath of life, but his soul would now degenerate in death. So everyone that was born after Adam's sin was made in Adam's image. This is why in salvation we must regain the image of Christ who is God. Romans 8.29 says, For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. God made a covenant with David regarding the Holy Spirit, never leaving him. David prays in Psalm 51.10.11 saying, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. You see, in the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit came upon men to do an assignment, but never dwelled in man or resided in man to live a holy life. The only way you can be conformed and made like Christ is if the Holy Spirit abides in you. David saw what happened to King Saul. 1 Samuel 16, 14 says, but the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. Now, what does this mean? An evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. In the Old Testament era, Satan and his demons were allowed access into the heavenly court of God to appear before him along with 
the Lord's heavenly host. First Kings 22, 19 through 22 says, and he said, hear thou therefore the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne and all the host of heaven standing by him and on his right hand and on the left. And the Lord said, who shall persuade Ahab that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? And one said on this manner and another said on that manner. And there came forth a spirit and stood before the Lord and said, I will persuade him. And the Lord said unto him, wherewith? And he said, I will go forth and I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And he said, thou shalt persuade him and prevail also. Go forth and do so. But God says to David in 2 Samuel 7, 12 through 16, which says, And when, they, when thy days be fulfilled, and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, I will set up thy seed after thee, which shall proceed out of thy bowels, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build an house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father, and he shall be my son. If he commit iniquity, I will chasten him with a rod of men and with the stripes of the children of men. But my mercy shall not depart away from him as I took it from Saul, whom I put away from before thee. Thine house and thy kingdom shall be established forever before thee. Thy throne shall be established forever. Many see this as speaking about David's son Solomon, but this is actually talking about the Messiah, Jesus the son of David, the son of God. Notice what he says to David. But my mercy shall not depart away from him as I took it from Saul. God was talking about the Holy Spirit not being taken away. Jesus says in John 14, 16 through 17, and I will pray the father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. After Jesus died on the cross and rose from the dead, he would send the Holy Spirit to abide with them and in them forever. But those are also passages, or there are also other passages in the Old Covenant that foretold of an eternal salvation that would not fade away. Jeremiah 32 and 40 says, And I will make an everlasting covenant with them, and I will not turn away from them to do them good, but I will put my fear in their hearts that they shall not depart from me. And also Jeremiah three nineteen says, But I said, How shall I put thee among the children and give thee a pleasant land, a goodly heritage of the hosts of nations? And I said, Thou shalt call me my father and shalt not turn away from me. This shows us what Christ came to do is bring us the new covenant. In John 6, 37, 39, and 44, which says, All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. And this is the Father's will which hath sent me, that of all which he hath given me I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. No man can come to me except the Father which sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. When Jesus ascended into heaven, Satan was cast out of heaven, never to appear in the presence of God again. Jesus is our intercessor, who is able to save us to the uttermost. But the key is walking and continuing to walk with Christ and not walking in sin. If you are sealed with the Holy Spirit, you will want to live pleasing to the Lord. And you will live pleasing in his sight because you are sealed with the Holy Spirit. John 10, 27 and 28 says, My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me and I will give or I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Why? Will they not perish? That's the question. Once he saves you, you are always saved because you are sealed. We do pray something was said to help build your understanding up to another level in the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Be blessed.